Hello and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to day four of the Sunshine Readathon. I did all my reading off camera today and because I found yesterday's video particularly difficult to edit, I thought I would do my little reviewing of the short stories in Common Bonds slightly differently today. So, so far I have read a further seven stories, I believe, and so I'm gonna go through them one by one and talk about my thoughts because there were, once again, a whole bunch that really stood out to me and that I adored, and others that I still want to talk about because they are so important, these stories with such excellent representation. So, I will get right into it. The first thing that I read after finishing up yesterday was In the Summer A Banana Tree by Thomas Shaw Leonard or Leonard and this was a poem rather than a short story but it was so so sweet. It was an ode to a companion that the narrator had had and it was so filled with love and warmth and it really touched my heart. The subject of the narrator's affections is revealed later in the poem so I will not give the specifics but I just thought it was so beautifully written and so soft in that revelation of who the narrator is writing to, who their affections are directed towards and I loved it. I thought it was so sweet. Then the next thing is another poem by Thomas Shaw Leonard called Remembering the Farm and this again was beautifully written. I love the imagery or rather the setting of Leonard's poems. They're so vibrant and full of warmth and life and it really really centres this affection that runs through both of the poems. Remembering the Farm is instead dedicated towards a distant family member, a father who was both there and not always there and what is left behind in his absence. And again, this one was a lot more wistful but it still had that real warmth of affection running through it, now marred slightly by sadness and by loneliness. These two poems together really tapped into a niche aspect of platonic relationships that is dominated not by friendship but by familial relationships and by companionship of different varieties and I thought it was a great way to shake up the collection a little bit. So far a lot of the stories have been focused around friendship very simply between two individuals whereas this took a different turn. I thought it was a great way to show the breadth and depth of non-romantic relationships within this collection by including some poems that reflected on more I guess standardised relationships in that way. Either way, I thought they were both lovely, very quick to read, beautiful setting, lovely. Then I read Fishing Over the Bones of the Dragon by Jeff Reynolds. This, rather like Voices in the Air, was a story that I don't think I got the full effect of. It was very atmospheric and it had a great mythical feeling to it, which I really, really enjoyed. However, I don't feel like I got the overall metaphor within the story. This is the story of a young man who goes out fishing with his father one morning over the bones of a dragon that are laying in the bottom of a lake and reflecting on a strange dream that he was drawn into. As I say, I don't think I got the metaphor and so I don't think I got the full effect of the story but what I will say is that this was beautifully written. Just the imagery of being sat on this lake over the skeleton of a dragon trying to catch fish all while talking about this very very strange dream that seemed to happen both over barely over a year and well over a century. Just the feeling of the words were magical even if I couldn't understand it and so I deeply admired the creation of this story. Even if I don't think I got what was intended within it I still think it was pretty good equally would have loved to have understood it better. Next was Asteria 3 by Marjorie King. This was a sci-fi short story about a young woman who is attempting to reach the edge of the galaxy in order to find another habitable planet for humans. She is in the third mission to try to reach this planet. So far both previous attempts have failed and so Eleanor, the woman, has a lot weighing on her mind because she feels responsible for the deaths of her friends and she is also processing grief as her father lies dying on Earth of Alzheimer's and the ship that she is in, the AI system has been programmed to replicate her father perfectly. So it's a really, really 
beautiful story about Eleanor connecting with her father while also trying to push the bounds of humanity's capabilities. This wasn't one of my favourite stories just because I'm not a big fan of sci-fi, I'm not a big fan of exploring the worlds beyond kind of stories, but I really really loved the aspect of it that was the idea of capturing someone that a person is incredibly close to in order to accompany them as AI. I thought that was so clever and so cool and I loved the way it was explored within this story. The next story that I read was A Full Deck by Avi Silver and I absolutely loved this one. This story centres around two Canadian demon hunters named Mads and Danny who are trying to get back their friend Bartok who has been kidnapped by an incubus which is a type of demon that feeds off of romantic attraction. Unfortunately they are not able to get close enough to the incubus and so they have to team up with their main rival in the demon hunting scene, a man called Cat the Bastard who is distinctly roguish and who feels that he may have some role to play in Bartok's kidnapping. I thought this was such a clever take on demon hunting, especially because Mads and Danny make up a team of demon hunters called the Aces, so called because they are all on the asexual and aromantic spectrums, and they find that this distinctly helps in their demon hunting as succubuses and incubuses rely heavily on romantic and sexual attraction to capture people and to feed off of them. So I thought it was a really really clever take on that aspect of demon hunting as a trope and I really really liked the inclusion of Cat the Bastard who although he is aromantic is in fact allosexual and so he likes the company of demons, he's very weird, but I really liked his character. He was so fun, and in particular his interactions with Mads, who absolutely despises him but equally appreciates his skill when it comes to trying to get Bartok back was just hilarious. I also really really loved the casual trans representation of Cat the Bastard casually putting on his binder before heading out of the house. I thought it was an excellent way to just slip in some more diversity, some more inclusion, and to give some more depth to his character as well. The fact that Cat is also aromantic made the, the tension between him and Mads even more entertaining because it's obviously not enemies to lovers, neither of them are interested in a relationship in that way. However, they had that very enemies to something dynamic and this was just like some of the other stories I've read, one where it felt like a one-shot or a fan fiction dedicated to a larger story and I would so happily read a longer work about Mads and Danny and Cat the Bastard going around hunting demons and using their identities to their advantage in that hunting. I just it was so full of warmth, I really really liked it. The next story that I read was called Half a Heart and it was by Ren Oliviera and this one really touched me in a similar way to Would You Like Charms with that. It just really really resonated with me in a way that I don't quite know how to describe. This is a story told through the second person perspective addressing the reader as you and it is about a forest spirit talking about when a child stumbles into their realm and is looking for a way to get back to their family and so the forest spirit has to learn how to communicate with a human, essentially, with something that expresses its emotions very physically and learning to read them but also teaching them about the forest that they live in together. It was so touching and beautiful to watch this sort of parental relationship that the forest spirit has with the child grow and change and the ways that they themselves grow and change with the natural world around them. It was so beautiful to see that kind of mentor-mentee relationship filled with love and respect and admiration and more than anything that the forest spirit's loneliness was healed by this child who randomly stumbled into the place where they live. I think that was the thing that really got to me with this, was it really hit on that human need for connection. Not in a romantic way or a sexual way, but just the need to have people in your life, the need to touch the lives of others and to make an impact on someone other than yourself. And by doing it through this idea of the forest spirit as a physical manifestation of the forest, as someone who physically contains it within themselves but is also very in tune with the forest around them externally, was so touching and especially with the ending which I obviously won't spoil but the way that the child embraces both 
who the forest spirit is and what they can offer but what else exists in the world around them was so beautiful again i didn't cry but i just i was so full of emotion that i felt like i could the writing in this one as well was just exquisite with all the natural imagery and the sort of bodily imagery because of that coexistence of the forest inside the forest spirit and the external forest it was just stunning and i really really liked the use of the second person narrative actually which you know it's a very weird one to write with and I feel that often if a writer chooses to use it, it is in some way an attempt to show their, their craft and their skill, which either does work or really doesn't, but in this case it really added to that sense of the forest spirit's prior loneliness and now their sense of fulfilment in having someone to take care of and nurture and educate and god i loved it it was so beautiful <laughs> finally in this little section of reading that i did i read shift by mika or micah stannard this was rather like the moon sisters story about werewolves and about having a pack and finding your pack but instead it is through the perspective of a girl named olivia who has worked out that her roommate is a werewolf and so rather like a standard coming out in terms of sexuality she decides to sort of try to poke Alexandria, her roommate, into revealing that she is a werewolf because Olivia's already worked it out but she wants her roommate to know that she is comfortable with it, that it's okay and she knows that she is who she is. And it was really sweet, the relationship between Olivia and Alexandria was developed so so quickly but it felt really really warm and genuine and it was a lovely take on that sort of werewolf trope and having read two werewolf stories which Side note, I have never read a story with werewolves before. I never read Twilight or anything like that and I've never really gone in search of fantasy or in particular sort of paranormal supernatural stories. And so to have suddenly read two werewolf stories in one go, both with links to aromanticism and asexuality, it really made me think about the pack nature of werewolves and the fact that it is so easy to incorporate non-sexual, non-romantic relationships into werewolves as a literary concept. And I really, really like it. It really works for showing the extraordinary depth and breadth of options for human relationships that we have and the ways that we just need people to love in that way. And yeah, I thought it was really, really sweet. Moon Sisters, I still prefer, I think, in terms of the two werewolf stories. But again, Shift was just sweet and lovely. So those were the seven stories that I read just now. There are now three left in the collection. I am both happy and sad about that. Happy because I am so excited to read more of these stories, but also sad because, ah, then I will have experienced them all for the first time and I will never get a first reading of any of them again. <laughs> I'm now going to take a little break, but I am planning to read the next three stories sometime soon. So I will be back with you when I have read them. Hey, hi, hello. It is me once again. I decided not to read another three short stories this evening and instead just spend some time with myself. So I will be reading the final three stories of Common Bonds tomorrow before I embark on trying to read a book in one day, which will be very exciting. So I will read those stories tomorrow along with What a Time to Be Alone by Chidera Eguru. I'm very excited to read this, but yeah, in the meantime, hope you enjoyed today's video. Please give it a like if you did. Comment down below how you're doing with your reading. I always like to hear what other people are reading, especially if it's good. And if you are interested in more of my bookish content, please feel free to subscribe. I am making a video every single day this week as part of the Sunshine Readathon, so do subscribe if you are interested in seeing more of my videos. And I will see you tomorrow.